It was only a few months ago that Meizu invited us at Gizmo China to their launch of the Meizu 15. And here we are a few months later in Beijing, China for the launch of the Meizu 16th and the Meizu 16th Plus. Don't call them the 16th as they're definitely called the 16th. My name is Adam, tech editor for Gizmo China. Let's see what the 16th is all about. Well, walking into the massive disco, <clears throat> the massive event hall, you could feel something great was about to happen. We have already identified that the Meizu 16th and 16th Plus would be packing some serious heat, as we reported the 8GB RAM model on the Gizmo China website previously. We also had ideas of an active fingerprint sensor in the screen for both models. Nearly immediately, we we were told about the inclusion of the top of the line Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 processor. You know, the good one with the 10 nanometer FinFET process, a 2.8 gigahertz clock speed, and 30% improved GPU energy efficiency. It's paired with an octa-core cryo CPU and the fantastic Adreno 630 GPU, which should provide a heck of a punch. And yeah, 6 and 8 gigabyte of RAM options, a first for Meizu, with some seriously high speed LPDDR4X RAM involved. These specs push the Antutu score to a top tier with a 291,866 score. That's some serious power. The Meizu 16th at 150.5 millimeters tall, 73.2 millimeters wide, and an industry leading 7.3 millimeters thick or thin feels pretty dang good in the hand, while the Meizu 16th Plus is 160.4 millimeters tall, 78.2 millimeters wide, and that same tiny 7.3 millimeter thickness. It also feels pretty good. The screens are brilliant, with the Meizu 16th getting a notchless 6 inch screen, while the Meizu 16th Plus smashes a 6.5 incher into its frame. Both have 2160 by 1080 pixel Super AMOLED screens, with seriously tiny bezels and fingerprint sensors in the screen. Yeah, you heard that right. With most specs on each phone being quite similar, the size is a major differentiator, as is the battery with the 16th including a 3010 milliamp battery and the 16th plus packing 3640 milliamps into that small space. Both are rated at about 13 hours of on-screen time and will definitely be something we look at closely when we get our full review unit. It. it seems Meizu's Fly Me is getting an upgrade to Fly Me 7, being based on Android Oreo, and is using OneMind AI to preload apps 36% faster. Included in the OS upgrade is Super Swipe, which is said to improve fluidity by about 67%, a new Super MBAC 2.0 button for smoother navigation, and a new gesture system that seems to be quite good. And it works the same on three different sides, although the top of the screen is still saved for the quick settings tray and who has hands that large anyway. With all the power included in the 16th models, including a custom copper liquid cooling system similar to the recently reviewed Honor Note 10, Meizu has partnered with some big time game publishers to get the most out of your gaming experience. It seems that actually using these as a phone matters as the devices have some of the best connectivity specs out there with 2x2 MIMO Wi-Fi and 4x4 MIMO LTE connections. Add in the blue Bluetooth 5.0 for fantastic hands-free action. Unfortunately, there's no wireless charging available. Now to one of my favorite parts of any smartphone these days is the camera. Meizu threw their kitchen sinks at this one with a 12 megapixel IMX380 sensor, which is actually one of the larger mobile sensors out there, paired with a 20 megapixel IMX350. It's got four axis optical image stabilization and plenty of shutter speed options. The AI available has 16 scenes, each with different settings depending on the situation. Most of you guys should find this pretty useful. The front selfie camera is a 20 megapixel f2.0 shooter with ArcSoft AI intelligent beauty mode, which should help with your vacation selfies or your office selfies. Well, wherever you selfie, this should be pretty great to use. Videos from the main sensors seem like they could be pretty strong with up to 4K resolution and a bevy of options, including my faves time-lapse and slow-mo. So after the keynote, I was able to get 
my hands on a Meiju 16th unit for a few hours. And here are my first impressions from that time. The phone is fast, really fast. In the keynote, it was mentioned that the phone should have the smoothest operation and all at light speed. I think they may have something here. I'll be able to test against the more expensive OnePlus 6 and Xiaomi Mi 8 once we get a review unit. That should be fun. The screen is pretty dim. Seriously, the phone is fairly difficult to use in bright light situations due to the low brightness. I tried with auto brightness on and off and didn't see any improvement in either. The bezels are small and the design is very comfortable to hold. I really like the clean styling but do wish the Meiju branding was slightly smaller on the back of the phone. I really like the uniform rounded corners and think that they look pretty nice. I'm not so sure about the cameras. Maybe this was just a pre-production model but none of the videos I shot were stabilized. If they were they weren't stabilized well. I'm wondering if the optical stabilization just exists on the Meiju 16th plus but Meiju hasn't gotten back to me on that question yet. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to save the footage I took, so make sure to subscribe to Gizmo China for the full review to clarify this. The photos were fairly good, but the lighting on the day wasn't really all that great, so further testing is definitely needed. About the in-screen fingerprint reader, well, see for yourself. It's fast. It does seem to be somewhat picky, however, as it took me a few tries if my finger wasn't positioned correctly. I'm hoping this was just a learning curve, but I do like what I saw with the tech. As for pricing, the models for the 16th version include a 6GB RAM plus 64GB storage model that costs 2,698 Chinese Yuan. A 6GB RAM plus 128GB storage model for 2,998 Chinese Yuan. And an 8GB RAM plus 128GB storage version for 3,298 Chinese Yuan. The models for the 16th Plus version include a 6GB RAM plus 128GB storage model that that costs 3,198 Chinese Yuan, an 8GB of RAM plus 128GB storage model for 3,498 Chinese Yuan, and an 8GB RAM with 256GB storage version for 3,998 Chinese Yuan. That's some serious power for your buck. Make sure to let us know your thoughts on the new Meizu 16th and 16th Plus in the comments below and give us some comparison recommendations. Additionally, make sure to subscribe to the Gizmo China YouTube channel for our full review coming up soon.